Okay, welcome to 6.6. .6. We're starting to get towards the end of this topic. And we're gonna talk about bonds and other financial assets. So a coupon rate. A coupon rate is uh, specific to a bond. It is the interest rate that the bond issuer is gonna pay a bond holder. Now, a bond is an investment for a specific amount of time. It's much like a CD, but tends to be longer. Um, so if you invest $1,000 in a five-year bond, you're gonna get principal plus interest back at maturity. Uh, that's the next one, which is maturity. That is the time to which the pay payment of principal plus interest is due to the bondholder. Par value, this is the stated value at maturity. So when, 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 when I cash in this bond, how much principal and interest will I get? The yield will be the annual rate of return if it's held to maturity because you tend to gain interest on interest, even though like the CD in 6.5, it was 5% annual interest, but it was a yield of 5.13 because you make that 5% interest year one, then you make 5% interest on the principal and interest from year one. That's where overall you get a little bit higher yield. Savings bonds, these are low denomination bonds issued by the United States government. This is how we finance our national debt. An inflation index bond, uh, what this is gonna do is you might, uh, if you have an interest rate of say 5% and it's inflation index, if inflation goes up 2%, then you would receive that 2% on top of the 5%, uh, maybe it's 1%. There's something on there calculated with inflation that if inflation goes up, your interest rate is gonna go up. Municipal bonds. These are bonds by state or local government. Uh, examples, when they uh, refurbished Beach, they did municipal bonds so that they had the money. Uh, purchasing Liberty Creek and building it, those are gonna be municipal bonds. Corporate bonds are a corporation if they want to expand or raise money for you know maybe a, a, a new branch or a new plant, things like that. Junk bonds. That's why they're called junk, because they're high risk and they're high yield. And it, when they go bad, they're nothing but junk. <laughs> they have the potential to be nothing but junk. Uh, capital markets. You need to know the difference between a capital and a money market. Capital markets are where money is lent for longer than a year. Or sorry, yeah, for longer than a year. Money markets are a year or less. So a year, nine months, six months, three months, one day. Primary markets, this is where financial assets can be redeemed only by the original holder. So I've bought stock and I go and redeem my stock, that sort of thing. Secondary market might be where I own a bond and I, I've just hit financial hardship and I need to sell my bond. I get that I'm gonna have to sell it lower than, than what I originally was gonna get for it. That would be a secondary market where I've already purchased it and I need to find somebody to purchase it from me. In 1942, we had World War uh, II. We uh, had put all of our resources into the Allied effort. Uh, in order to have money to fund the war, we had to sell savings bonds. A lot of people call them war bonds. Here's an example of a uh, poster saying, hey, come buy war bonds. Um, they wanted to encourage Americans to buy it. Yes, they got an interest rate. They got savings off of it. But it also was what funded our participation in the war. Now, this whole idea of discounts from par. Can you sell a bond before maturity? Yes, you can. It's not as easy. That's why we wouldn't say it's liquid. Because you got to find a buyer. When we talk about par value, par value is going to be when that uh, asset matures, how much money are you gonna get? So here, if investor one buys a bond with a par value at 5% interest, uh, they're not telling us how long, so I'm just gonna say one year. So that means they would have a thousand, oops, 50, 1%. thousand dollars, $1,050 at the end of one year. 
well, let's just say, oh my gosh, I need to sell it. I've got to go have a root canal. I don't know, I'm making something up. And I need to sell it to somebody. Well, if I sell it to them, their value that they're going to get is 1050 But if the current interest rate is now 60%, why do I want to pay you $1,000 for something that's only going to yield $50 when I can go buy one currently that's going to yield $60? I'll make more money buying it straight from the bank. So if investor one wants to sell it, they're going to have to discount that price. And they're going to have to look at the fact that over here, this person would make $1,060, okay? Um, so then I would have to discount my bond if I want to sell it. And if we look in this example, because they're using a different amount, uh, this investor might sell it for $960 because that would account for how much money someone would get at the current rate of 6%. So now I might be enticed to go buy this used bond. It's gonna mature quicker. I'm paying less than $1,000 for it. So I'm seeing a savings right now and I'm gonna get less in the end. But instead of paying $1,000 for the bond, I'm paying only 960. Yes, I'm only getting 5% interest instead of six, but I've already saved $40. Now, businesses will uh, issue bonds in order to grow. Here is an example where we have a company that issued some bonds. So they have got this plan where they set aside bond, uh, bond money to pay it off at maturity. And then here's the interest that they pay on the bond because if they're borrowing money, they have to pay interest. So you can see here, they break even around year five. Around year five, they break even. After year five, all of this right here, this is profit they made because of that investment. And you think about it, if you've increased your revenue up to here, once all this is paid off, then you've just got pure revenue. That's why people expand. Uh, when corporation and governments need to borrow money for long periods of time, they're going to issue bonds. And that's how our national debt is funded. They're 30-year treasury bonds. So again, no one can go in and go, hey, United States, I want my money for my bond. They're going to go, no, it doesn't mature for 30 years. You got to wait till it's due. And as long as we pay when it's due, we're not defaulting on the bond. There are several different types of bonds. Uh, I've mentioned them, savings. We got treasury bonds, bills, and notes, and those have a lot to do with how uh, the length of time you can hold them. Municipal bonds are state or local governments. Corporate bonds come from, from corporations. And junk bonds, again, high risk, high reward, but you can lose everything and they're nothing but junk. Isn't this one cute? I'm sorry, but that's just adorable. This is a buy war bond. And so now they're peeling on, you know, you've got that cute little baby and invest in that baby's future. And you're also helping the war. Go USA. Um, so some of you might have gotten a bond that matures when you're 18 that someone bought when you were born. Here are the different types of government debt that we have. Treasury bond is going to be 30 years. This is the type of bond that finances our national debt. If it's a note, it is less than 30 years. It's between two, five, and 10 years. And a treasury bill is gonna be um, 52 weeks, that's a year and a half, okay? Less than two years. You can see they're safe. Uh, only the treasury bill has some type of liquidity because of the, the short amount of time on them. They do have minimum purchases. You can't just go say, I want a dollar. And they have a denomination. Now, what this denomination means is I can't go in here and say, oh, I want to buy $125 worth of treasury bonds. It has to be in denominations of $100. So I can buy $100, $200, $300, $400, $10,000. As long as it's in increments of $100, that's the amount I can purchase. In addition to bonds, investors can choose other types of assets. You've got CDs, money markets, you've got stocks. Stocks are gonna come a little bit later on. Uh, 
Again, we've already said this, if we talk about bonds, bond, or savings bonds are low. Treasury bonds would be second risk. They're a little, you hold them a little longer. Municipal bonds, these are local government. So they actually gonna be, have a little more risk than a savings bond uh, in case the local government runs into trouble. But again, uh, our, our US, our national savings bonds are considered some of the most reliable investments in the world. Money market is mutual. Corporate bonds have a lot more risk just because if the corporation expands and goes belly up, you could lose uh, repayment. Junk bonds, you can see they're over here. They're by themselves. Like they are, mm -mm. nobody wants to be with them. Nobody wants to touch them because they can go bad quickly. Uh, we have two types of markets. We have the primary and the secondary market. We also have the capital and the money market. Uh, again, capital market is investments greater than a year. Money market is a year or less. Uh, secondary market is where someone's already bought the asset and then they want to sell it to someone else. Primary is where you're buying it directly from the issuer. And so you'll see sometimes, I mean, traders just sitting around like this on computer screens uh, selling financial assets, both on the primary market and the secondary market. And there we go for topic six. See you for seven.